kids, I'm Miss Holly from the Socasty Library and today we are going to be learning a little bit about sea turtles for my friend Miss Ann, an interpretive ranger at the Myrtle Beach State Park. Hello Miss Ann. Hey, how are you? I'm good. So what do we have here? What is this? One of my favorite animals. This is a life-size paper version of South Carolina State Reptile, the loggerhead sea turtle. And they can weigh about two to three hundred pounds. Wow. And they'll spend most of their lives swimming in the ocean. You want to guess how old they can live to? Um, I'm going to say 200 years. 200 years? What do y'all think out there? Can you hear any answers? I'm hearing answers all over the place. They're pretty long lived. We actually don't really know. 200 is probably too old. We're thinking um, 75 to 100 years, which is still pretty old. It's older than a lot of you watching today, I bet. Yep. Miss Ann, why are they called loggerheads? That's a good question. So loggerhead sea turtles, they have really big heads in comparison to their body size. Have you been to Ripley's Aquarium? I have. So have you seen Gabby, the sea turtle at Ripley's Aquarium? It's been a long time. She, she likes to hide a lot, but she's a green sea turtle and she has a smaller head than the loggerhead. And that's because of what they eat. So all sea turtles, they have no teeth, but very sharp jaws. And so loggerheads have really huge areas for their jaw muscles, okay? And so loggerheads, they will crunch whelks, which are pretty strong. They'll crunch horseshoe crabs. They'll crunch crabs. They'll also, you know, they'll also, they're, they're not as picky in the sea turtle buffet in the ocean. They'll also eat jellyfish, fish, shrimp, you know, whatever else is out there. But they have a biting force of 500 pounds. So they could cut this two by four in half. They could crush it. Wow. Green sea turtles. So Gabby and, and Ripley's Aquarium, much smaller head. And because as green sea turtles get older, they tend to eat a lot of seaweed, sea grasses, algae. So they don't need as strong of jaws as as loggerheads do. Well, that's really neat. Yeah. So let's talk about, because we're on the beach, let's talk about the eggs that they lay. So loggerheads, so they'll start coming up May, June, July, and August in South Carolina. That's when they lay eggs. And they usually come up at night. Why do you think they come up at night? because there's not people on the beach. Not as many people. And also, it's really what? Hot. It's really hot. hot. So most sea turtles prefer the cover of darkness. It's safer from people it's, and predators. It's darker and it's cooler. And so they'll come up into the, in the dead of night normally, crawl up here. It's one of the coolest footprints around, I think. It's, it's a brilliant crawl. It's their coolest footprint. And a lot of times they'll come up to these sand dunes, these hills of grass, which are protected. We don't want anyone to go up into these hills of grass and sand dunes because if we erode or break down these uh, sand dunes, sea turtles don't have a safe place to lay their eggs. And when we have all the hurricanes and storms, the ocean can go straight in and, and hurt our habitat, but also the development, you know, our buildings, our homes, our roads and things. So this is our first line of defense, so really important habitat, okay? But they'll start laying their eggs. And do you think they dig their nest with their front flippers or their back flippers? What do y'all think? Front um, or back? Their front. You would think, and they will move sand with their front, but they dig the nest with their back flippers. So imagine that turtle we saw earlier. She's going to come in with her back flippers and be incredibly precise. She's going to go down and out, down and out, and then she'll flick sand in and then keep going down. And this hole really is only about this big. That two to 300 pound beast. And she'll lay a, a nest, put out your arms everybody, about as deep as your arm is long. And it's in the shape of an old fashioned upside down light bulb. And she'll lay how many eggs that are ping pong ball size, how many eggs do you think she'll lay at one time? Um, 20. 20, good guess, but a whole lot more. Uh, on average last year is about 113, 115 eggs at one time. They can lay as few as 50 all the way up to 170 eggs at one time. Wow. Pretty cool. 
So do you think these eggs, when they fall into a nest that's this deep, and a hundred some eggs, you think they're hard like a chicken egg or soft and leathery? I would say soft so they don't break. That's right. They're very soft and so they'll come down. And it'll take them about two months, give or take, to emerge. And it all depends on, what do you think, it dep what do you think helps, it, helps determine how long it takes for them to emerge or hatch? The weather? Yeah, so it's all about temperature with sea turtles. How hot the sun is, how much rain have we had, have tides washed over the nest, how hot is the sand, so many different things. And so people, my number one question I get is, when can I see the baby turtles hatch? And my question is, when they're ready? I don't know. <laughs> it's anywhere from day 50 to day 70, all depending on the temperature and the weather and the temperature of the sand. But you know what temperature does determine about baby sea turtles? What does it determine? If they're boys or girls. Really? Yeah, so hotter temperatures create female sea turtles, and this is a life-size replica, and cooler temperatures create males. So if we have a normal summer, which we haven't had a normal summer in quite a while, but normal summers, like if a turtle lays eggs in May, those temperatures will be cooler. So probably those earlier nests should be males, should be. And then, you know, maybe a nest late in June, July, hotter temperatures so we'll have more females. They'll, they'll, they'll take less time in order to emerge, to hatch. So yeah, pretty cool fun fact. Really so boys are cool and girls were hot. Yes. Okay. So pretty cool. And then when do you think these hatch out? What, I mean, do they hatch out during the night or during the day? I'm gonna say during the day. Too hot. Literally oh, think so about hot. when, think about when you guys all walk across the sand on a hot day in July in your bare feet at noon. It's really hot. It's really hot. It's over 100 degrees. And so your feet burn. So think about what a poor turtle, they literally could bake to death. So they're gonna, they can actually, again, temperature, they can sense the temperature down here. And when they're ready to emerge, hatch out of their nest, and the sand is cooler, that's when they'll start emerging. And it's really fast, which is also why it's so hard to predict. And they'll be down from this sand dune down to the water. 20 minutes because it's dangerous out there. Lots of different predators, lots of different animals that want to eat them. What do you think some animals on the beach might want to eat them? Hmm. There's many choices. Pelicans. So pelicans might eat the hatchlings when they're out in the water. What do you think might eat them as they're coming down? Hmm. Even at night. Think mammals. Think furry do creatures. We have, like foxes? Foxes? You bet. And the cutest ones with the ring, um, with the black um, raccoons. raccoons. Oh, they love sea turtles, especially oh. the eggs, unfortunately. Coyotes on some beaches, um, feral pigs. Down further south in South Carolina, armadillos, believe it or not, especially the eggs. Um, and then some birds too. And then when they get out in the ocean, gosh, there's you know fish and sharks and so many different things. They have so many issues out there, so they really need our help. Yes. Now, the eggs that are in this diorama, are they true to size? How big are these eggs? Yes, they're about the size of ping pong balls. Wow. Yeah, loggerheads. When there are eggs on the beach, how do we know where those are? So, here's the cool thing. Did you know there are probably, there's over a thousand volunteers that are checking out the beaches seven days a week. Wow. From May, through the, until the last nest emerges, which could be in August. And so these volunteers are checking out the beaches every morning at 6 a.m. throughout the entire state of South Carolina. Wow, that's okay. exciting. And so they're doing it here at Myrtle Beach State Park too. And they look for the crawl, that photo that we showed earlier. And once we find a nest, and there's definitely eggs there, we will put up this sign. And so there will be hopefully orange signs throughout all of South Carolina, like in 2020, there are over 5,500 nests in the state, 5,500 nests, which is a really good wow. year. And so all those nests will have these signs on. And every nest has a different maybe form of a predator guard that might help protect it from those animals that we talked about earlier. But, you know, Huntington Beach State Park will have a big wire cage. I'm just gonna have a plastic mesh because I don't have as many predators here at Myrtle Beach State Park like Huntington Beach State Park does. They get more nests than we do up here. So we are looking for these and we want to stay away, correct? So all sea turtles are threatened and endangered, so they're protected by federal laws and state laws. 
So you do have to give, if you are lucky enough to see a turtle on the beach, you do have to give it distance. You can't harass it. You can't take a selfie with it, no matter how cool it looks. You want to give it distance because you don't want to scare it. And the same thing with the nest. You just want to give it space because you don't want to, you don't know exactly where the eggs are. I do, but you don't. And so also if you come across a crawl that maybe we haven't gotten to yet, it's almost like a crime scene and we call it a TSI, a turtle scene investigation. And we have all these clues. We have to figure out which direction the turtle came in, where she threw her sand, maybe where she laid that small little nest. Cause she could have um, a, a body pit that's maybe six feet by six feet and somewhere in that body pit, you know, is her egg chamber. That again is this deep that we have to figure out where it is. So you always wanna give everything space. Always give any type of wildlife space and respect because wildlife, while we're really excited to see wildlife, they get scared of us. Yeah, they may not be so excited to no. see <laughs> So if we see one of those spots on the beach, we want to stay clear and stay back so that way you guys can find out where the eggs are. Right. So we can protect them in some way. Right. What else can we do to help out the eggs? There's so many things we can do. You want to take a walk? Sure. All right. Cool. So what... What do we want to do when we're at the beach every day? So this is what I love about helping out wildlife. You can still have a ton of fun when you go to the beach, but it's so easy to help out sea turtles and other wildlife. So obviously all of us love to come to the beach and dig and make sand castles. So that's a whole lot of fun. But when you're done, we ask that you smash your sand castles. That's easy. Yes. And then also, what do, why do you think we should fill in holes? Because the turtles may fall in the hole. So this is not going to stop a big 200 pound loggerhead sea turtle, but the little hatchling, this is a death trap. And so whether it's a big hole or a small hole, we just want everyone to get in the habit. You know, fill it in. And look, it took me a whole lot longer to dig that hole and have fun than it was to clean it up. So yes. just give yourselves a couple minutes of time to fill in all your holes. Make sure you take home all your beach toys. So picking up toys is really important because also these toys are plastic. And sea turtles, remember we, we said what they eat earlier? They also eat a lot of jellyfish. And sea turtles can mistake things. So see this little hole right here? Yes. See that little hole? You wanna guess what that is? Maybe where their brain is. So their brain is very small. It doesn't make them dumb just makes, it's all they need to know. They know what they're supposed to do from the day they're born to the day they die. And so, if there is a plastic bag floating in the ocean, they mistake it as a jellyfish. And so this is why it's important to pick up trash of any type, any plastic, because also all the plastic can break down. We talked about those little hatchling turtles earlier. They've done some studies in Florida. Within a couple of weeks, they already have pieces of plastic in their stomach that they're eating. So it's critically important that we all pick up our trash and maybe use less plastic, you know, avoid some straws, maybe use less plastic, plastic bags, bags, bring your own water bottle instead of buying a plastic water bottle. It's so easy to do. So that's what you can do. And don't forget to take home your umbrellas, your chairs, because those are big optical courses for both the adults and the parents. Okay. So that's pretty easy to do every so day. So take everything home. Take everything home, whatever you brought. And hey, maybe take a few extra things that you see along the way. Fill in other people's holes. That's a really nice thing to do. And you know, it's a lot of fun. Good exercise. Yes. Get out a lot of the energy. Remember to stay off the sand dunes. Yes. And then if you are out at night, and we don't really recommend people walk the beach at night looking for turtles. And here's a hint. In Orange County, the odds of you finding a turtle at night are really low. We had over 5,500 nests last year in South Carolina. And there are less than 60 in this county, in Horry County. So, so we don't want to scare them. And we look like big giant predators, big giant monsters. Can we even a two to three hundred pound turtle? But if you have your flashlight on, the light will scare the adult off and make her go into the water and not let eggs called a false crow. And you're like, well, I don't have a light on. I just have my cell phone. Also a light. Also a light. Even if you're not using your flashlight app, it's still a light and also taking selfies and everything, that's actually considered harassment of the sea turtle. Yeah. And so that could also scare her into the water. 
and the lights on a hatchling will direct them in the wrong direction. That's how they know how to get to the ocean, is the moon, if it's out, but also those white waves. It's just always lighter on the ocean horizon than it is against the sand dunes. So it just lights out, sea turtles make the dirt. So that's pretty easy. And then also you want to make sure that your dog is always on a leash. Always on a leash. Always on a leash. And even, you know, especially when there's a hundred hatchlings crawling down the beach, what dog can resist? Exactly. I mean, it's the perfect wind-up toy. The perfect wind-up toy. Exactly. Thank you so much for coming today and joining us at Horry County Memorial Library. It was fun.